World Radio, researched and written in Indianapolis by Adrian Peterson, and produced in the studios of WRMI in Miami, Florida. I'm Jeff White. Today on Wayscan, focus on Africa, radio broadcasting in the land of the mountain lion, part three. The shortwave station in Sierra Leone meets its Waterloo, and our Australian DX report. <laughs> WaveScan presents Focus on Africa, a year-long series of reports about shortwave broadcasting and listening on the African continent. Waterloo. If you do a Google search for the word Waterloo, you'll find more than a hundred million entries in total altogether. Then, in the first few pages of these entries, you'll find a dozen or more places in several different countries that are named Waterloo. The original Waterloo was a small town in what is now Belgium. And all of the other places named Waterloo have been given that name in honor of the famed Battle of Waterloo that took place nearly 200 years ago. Back in those days, this original Waterloo was located in what was then a part of Holland, and the name in the Dutch language could be translated as wet forest, a low, swampy area. These days, children learn in their history lessons at school that the Battle of Waterloo was fought on Sunday, June 18, 1815, and that Napoleon was disastrously defeated. Hence, he met his Waterloo. A total of some 173,000 soldiers were engaged in the Battle of the Day, with a hideous total of 63,000 casualties. Napoleon surrendered, and was exiled to the island of St. Helena in the South Atlantic. The town of Waterloo in New Jersey in the United States has established a historic old village as a tourist attraction, recreating the early Indian days. Back in 1888, a nearly complete fossil skeleton was found near the Indiana town with the same name, and this is on display in the Museum of Natural History in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. The Waterloo station in London, England, is a large double railway station, part underground in their tube system and part above ground as an international rail terminal. It is reported that nearly 100 million passengers are served at this massive railway station every year. The underground railway system in Sydney, Australia, also boasts its Waterloo station. Well, the city of Waterloo in Sierra Leone is located 20 miles southeast of their national capital, Freetown, and it has a population of 40,000. It was established in 1819, just four years after the Battle of Waterloo, and it was named in honor of this historic military event. During the mid-1960s, a white paper was submitted to the Sierra Leone government outlining a proposal for a nationwide radio broadcasting system. This document suggested a large radio center at Magburuco, in the middle of the country, with three shortwave transmitters at 10 kilowatts each, and production studios in seven regional towns. This project was never implemented. A subsequent suggestion called for a 100-kilowatt shortwave transmitter to be established near Waterloo for nationwide coverage instead of the Magbruka project. Neither was this project at Waterloo implemented, at least not in its original concept. However, in 1971, the government decided to install a 250-kilowatt shortwave transmitter at Freetown, and a contract was signed with the Swiss manufacturer during the following year. Now, it just so happened that the German government was negotiating a trade agreement with the Sierra Leone government during this era, and it appears that a German financial grant aided in establishing this new facility. However, the location for the 250-kilowatt transmitter was now not at Freetown, nor at Goderich, but instead at Waterloo. The facility housing this new 250-kilowatt BBC transmitter from Switzerland, model SK-53, was officially opened with due ceremony in August 1974, and initial test broadcasts began in October. 
These introductory test broadcasts were heard in Australia. Then, on October 15th, and that was still in the same year, 1974, the transmitter was inaugurated in a special ceremony in which the president of Sierra Leone participated. The ceremony was broadcast live on 5980 kHz, and it was heard in New Zealand and reported in the Australian monthly journal Electronics Australia. Soon afterwards, irregular test broadcasts on behalf of Deutsche Welle in Germany were heard via this transmitter, and these were listed in the World Radio TV Handbook for the following year. The well-known international radio monitor Wendell Craighead in suburban Kansas City, Kansas, received a QSL from Deutsche Welle confirming these broadcasts, and this seems to be the only known QSL for this Deutsche Welle relay via SLBS Waterloo. Three years later, this high-power transmitter was reported as operating at half power, 125 kilowatts, and then apparently only spasmodically. For the next 10 years, almost nothing is known as to what was happening regarding the usage of this transmitter. In January 1988, the Australian DX News reported that the 250-kilowatt transmitter at Waterloo was already sold to a radio organization in Kuwait, and that it was apparently on the air with new programming. Then, for another eight years, almost nothing was heard about the usage of this transmitter under the Kuwaiti organization, though subsequently it was believed that it was already on the air in continuous usage with the broadcast of Muslim programming under the title Radio Al-Quran. During this time, states the magazine printed by the Japan Shortwave Club, a studio was in operation at Newton, some 20 miles north of Freetown, though a French radio monitor, Bernard Chanel, visited the station in 1995 and described a studio at Kissytown in suburban Freetown. Perhaps both reports were correct, though covering different time periods. In any case, the scheduling for Radio Al-Quran was from 1500 to 1900 UTC on 9630 kHz, and the transmitter at Waterloo was powered by the station generator, with an omnidirectional antenna system. These broadcasts apparently escaped the observations of distant international radio monitors all over the world for a period of some eight years, or perhaps many more, an event that is quite rare in the long history of shortwave broadcasting and monitoring. The Danish Shortwave Club International, in a report from the editor, stated that in Europe only a jammer was noted on this channel, apparently against Taiwan. In addition, stated Andy Sennett in Media Network from Radio Netherlands, the timing of the on-air broadcasts did not support long-distance propagation. However, the station...
to the same area. And finally, an English program, 15105 to South East Asia. At 0600, more frequencies are listed. English programs, 3250 to North East Asia, 9445 to North East Asia, and again on 9730. And the French programming, 11735 and 13760 to Central and South America, as well as 15180. And the Chinese program from the Voice of Korea at 0600 or 0700 is 13650 and 15105. So that's quite a variety of frequencies for Voice of Korea, apparently using new higher powered transmissions or new higher powered transmitters, and that central information from Radio Bulgaria monitoring. Now, we continued with further monitoring observations made here in Melbourne in the 31 metre band between 2000 and 2030. 9555, the Saudi Arabia Broadcasting Service in Arabic. 9565, the Voice of the Islamic Republic of Iran in Russian. 9570, Spanish Foreign Radio in Arabic. 9585, China Radio International from Kashi in Serbian. And 9600, China Radio International in English from Kunming. And 9620, All India Radio with its Arabic service to the Middle East. And 9610, Adventist World Radio from Nauen in Germany with French programming to Europe. And the voice of Turkey with the French broadcast on 9635. Another frequency for Saudi Arabia is 9675 with Turkish to the Middle East and 9685 Spanish Foreign Radio with French. And 9835 Radio Television Malaysia, Kuala Lumpur, carrying the programs from the Sarawak Regional Station in Malay. And 9845 China National Radio Network 1 in Chinese. And 9865, China Radio International from Kunming in Chinese. And finally, 9895, the voice of Russia from the Yerevan, Armenia, transmitting a relay site in English. So quite good reception from various stations in the 31 metre band in our Melbourne pre- or post-sunrise period between 2000 and 2030. That's all we have time for in our episode of the Australian DX Report, which came to you from Melbourne in Victoria, Australia. I'd just like to remind you that we offer full detail QSL cards showing Australian scenes and wildlife for correct reports received for these broadcasts. We also offer an email QSL service for reports sent by the internet or email. Full details about the QSL service are available at the Electronic D Express homepage, which is simply edxp.org. So until our next program, this is Rob Padula in Melbourne, in Victoria, Australia. Wishing you all good listening. Thanks for being with us and good DX. See you soon. Hawaiian music closes out WaveScan today. Thank you for listening to the International DX program from Adventist World Radio, researched and written by Dr. Adrian Peterson in Indianapolis. Next week on WaveScan, American states on shortwave, Washington, D.C., memories of an eclipse, South Pacific panorama, Pacific Island radio, and our Japan DX report. We have QSL cards available for your reception reports, on WaveScan, one from AWR, another from WRMI. We'll give you the address here in just a moment for your reports. A reminder that you can hear WaveScan live at the time of broadcast on the internet streams, awr.org, wrmi.net, 
www.wwcr.com and winb.com. You can also hear WaveScan live via WINB's live telephone stream. You can dial them up at the time of broadcast at 1 for the United States, then 415-655-0846. On your iPod, you can download WaveScan podcasts at awr.org. And WaveScan is available for download and rebroadcast by radio stations in any part of the world. If you'd like to broadcast WaveScan on your station, you can make a request to WaveScan or to WRMI. You can contact us at WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, USA. That's WaveScan, Box 29235, Indianapolis, Indiana, 46229, USA. You can contact us by email at wavescan at awr.org. That's wavescan at awr.org. I'm Jeff White at WRMI in Miami. Till next week, good listening, everyone. <laughs>